Hi, I'm Ismet and uh, welcome to this video introduction to Arc Toolbox. Arc Toolbox is ArcGIS's main interface to its analytical processing power. There are really many tools down in Arc Toolbox and it can be a bit overwhelming and a bit difficult to learn how to locate the right tool. There are however some tricks you can learn and in the following I'll try and uh, talk about these tricks and how you can organize your use of the toolboxes in an efficient way. First of all, it recalls processing of geodata geoprocessing and therefore we have the menu geoprocessing. The top part of the menu consists of links to the different main commonly used tools. So you can use these tools without having to go into the toolbox. Just like you from the selection menu have access to the select by layer and select by attribute tools without having to go to the toolboxes. Underneath these shortcut tools we have links to four of the most commonly used windows or window panes when you are working with uh, toolboxes. There's the search for the tool where you can type any word from the tool's title or the help text of the tool and it will locate the tool. There's the toolbox window itself. There's the environment where you can set different environmental settings for if making more efficient uh, processing. And finally we have the result window where you can um, see previously commands and go back and forth. We'll talk also more about these in a moment. Underneath we have links to um, more programming related things, so the model builder and the Python. And finally at the right at the bottom there is a link to the options where you have, can set some of the main options and we'll also cover that in a short while. There are, depending on if you, well, if you installed everything or not, there will be around 19 different toolboxes. Um, the idea is to think of it like toolboxes at home. I have one toolbox for my power tools and one toolbox for my manual tools. In this case, there is one toolbox for doing conversion, one toolbox for doing vector analysis, one toolbox for raster analysis, one toolbox for more management related things, and so on. Um, the tools are inside the toolboxes, we have tool sets. So, just like in most modern toolboxes, there's a little drawer you can lift up where you can have the screwdrivers one place and the spanners another place. So the tool set is just a subdivision of a toolbox. And in the tool set you and you don't have to have tool sets um, in a toolbox. And then you have the tools. Tools can have three different icons. They can have the little hammer icon, which indicates that it's a tool written in C or some other compiled language. There is the script lang tool icon which indicates that the tool is written in a script language, typical Python. And finally there is the model symbol that indicates that the tool is has been created using the model builder. So, but independent of its symbol and how it's been created, they are tools with the same right, they function in the same way, can be used in the same way. So you don't have to worry about the symbol of the tool. It's also be pointed out that a single tool can also can be located in many toolboxes. So that's a wee bit different from uh, the analog to uh, the real world where screwdrivers only can be at one place at the same time. but in here we can have the same tool located in many toolboxes. The idea is that the toolboxes should be um, workflow oriented so if the same 
tool can be used in several workflows, you will find it in those toolboxes. There is one thing one typically have problem with as is in ArcMap, that is remembering the selection set. If there is a selection set, all the tools I know of at least, they will honor that selection set, and meaning that they will only process those elements that are selected. This is both a very practical thing and also a very annoying thing because often one forgets that there was something selected, one of the tools, and the result is not quite what one expected. So be aware that if there's a selection set, the tools will typically only process the selected elements. Be also aware that the tool select layer by attribute can be used not just only to select things but also to clear the selection so that if you want to make sure that there is no selection there is of course a button in the menu where we can do it in the clear selection but you have also the possibility to use the select by attribute tool and then use a clear selection in its options. This is of course primarily relevant when we start doing model builder later. One other thing one should probably start with thinking about is going into the geoprocessing options and there in the top there is a one that is called override outputs of geoprocessing operations. Typically when we do in geoprocessing we are in a try and error mode and therefore we often will be wanting to overwrite our output instead of having to call it one one two three four test six seven eight and so on we can just keep the same name and it will overwrite it automatically remember that of course that means that the data can be lost but in the geoprocessing situation i would say that it is typically the night the most convenient to have enabled the overwrite so that we don't have to worry about our renaming of our files. So I typically go in and say, say that. Also note that you can choose background processing. Uh, background processing means that you, while the tool is running, you can work on in the main interface. There will be a little blue ribbon at the bottom of the screen indicating that the tool is running and you can then uh, when it's finished see the results also if you are running on a 64-bit computer background processing gives access to the 64-bit instead of the 32-bit that the foreground application uses so there are different uh, reasons why one might enable background processing I should say that sometimes I have experienced that something will run in the background so I will disable the background and it will run or maybe it won't run in the foreground and I can then run it in the background it's a bit peculiar and it, I don't know why but it, if there are peculiar things happening this might be a possibility the results window is um, an interesting window because it whenever one runs a tool alone it won't not when you run it in the model builder later but when you run it alone it will set its input so I put its output information into the result window so you can see which tools you run you can see their parameters you can uh, go in and uh, redo operations so any operation you do will come in if it um, succeeds it will be a little hammer if it fails there will be a little red indication that it failed you can double click on the hammer and it will bring up the dialog box of the tool with the settings you had last time you run it 
So you can just change the settings a bit and then run it again. There's also quite a lot of tools that give extra information, not just the output, but messages, especially the geostatistical tools. So the results window also gives access to reading these messages or even giving access to other outputs than files such as reports. So the results tool is not just saying, okay, this is what has run, but it also gives you access to extra information about it. It gives you ability to redo com previous commands by clicking on the tools that have run. And finally, it also functions as some form of documentation of how the process has run. There are some things that you should consider using the toolboxes. First of all, I often create a little toolbox with the most commonly used tools. So I don't have to navigate through all of these tools because I might just use about 10-20% of the tools. So create your own little toolbox and then consider where you want to place it. Let's look at that in uh, ArcMap. So if we go to our catalog, um, I just um, pin it down and drag it to the center of the screen. So strangely enough, you don't have to use the toolbox window at all to access tools. All the tools are down on the toolboxes, system toolboxes, and here you can have it. So you don't navigate all the tools. So you don't have to use the toolbox window to find your tools. Then there is this one that's called Mind Toolboxes. And it is very logical to place your own toolboxes in that one. However, I will not recommend doing that because if you do this, like I've done here, you, uh, I can see where it has saved it. And you can see it saves it down in app data roaming profile and so on. This is a location that you normally can't browse to because app data is a hidden folder. And one of the nice things with tools is that you can take the toolbox, put them on your USB stick, put them onto Dropbox, email them and so on. And this place is far difficult to find. So I personally don't like saving tools down into this folder. So what I normally do is that instead of using this My Toolbox thing here, I go up into one of my folder connections. So typically the one that is the folder connection on my hard disk. And there I can have, create my toolbox. My tools. Once you've created your toolbox, you can start moving tools into it. So for instance, if um, you are going to use the buffer tool a lot, you could go into buffer and you can simply drag it into your toolbox. And now you have buffer tool there. If you're going to have a lot of tools in your toolbox, it might be a good idea to create a tool set. So you might call it vector. Tools for handling vector data. Um, strange enough, you can't put it in there, so you'll have to delete it again. Yeah, and then drag it in into that toolbox. Why it's like that? No idea. So we have our buffer, we might have our union, and so on. So you can put in all your different tools into that toolbox. And this toolbox can then be used when it, when it on all computers simply by moving this toolbox file 
This is a standard file called tbx in this folder. So it's just a question of copying this this toolbox onto USB stick, emailing it, whatever. So having toolboxes, saving them on your one of the your folder connections, I personally find is much nicer than using my toolboxes. Another thing one should be aware of is that if one uses the search tool and let's look for buffer the buffer tool sometimes we need to know where it is located so this link down here is a link to the location of the tool if I click on the link, note that it does not go to the toolbox window, but it locates it in the catalog window. So if you're going to use the search tool, it might be easier not to use the toolbox window at all, but only using the catalog window. Um, not quite got used to what I want to do yet. Um, but I might be changing from using the toolbox to using the catalog window um, as the only interface to my tools. So that was this short introduction to how you use the toolboxes.